Sophia, Aya, Emma, Exa, and now Spatial Computing, welcome to the bewildering world of immersive technologies, where acronyms get tossed around like pillows at a developer's sleepover party. We're going to dive into each of these terms to understand what they actually mean and how they're being used. Kicking us off, we have virtual reality. This is by far the easiest to understand. It is more than just strapping an electronic device to your eyeballs, but instead entering an immersive 3D environment distinct from the physical world. In 2024, the majority of VR devices operate in six degrees of freedom, which means that you can move around in this virtual space. A prime an example of this is the brand new Quest 3, and in the gaming world we have experiences like Half-Life Alex or Beat Saber. For more practical uses we have things like learning a language in Nowntown or in the enterprise space, companies like Uptail which deliver safety and training experiences to field workers that helps them become familiar with dangerous equipment. While Pokemon Go might be people's first rendezvous with AR, it's more than just catching virtual ratatars in the park. AR involves overlaying digital information, which could be images, data, animation, onto the real world through devices like smartphones, or AR glasses. These aren't AR glasses. They're not even mine, this is stupid. AR is already sneaking into our life and here you can try on clothes before buying them and in the education space it has massive opportunities. Imagine learning about the solar system with planets hovering around you or practicing complex machinery repairs with step-by-step -step holographic instructions. Mixed reality. Imagine a world where the digital and physical elements not only coexist but they also can interact. And that's Emma. And if it sounds like AR, well it kind of is, but it's more like AR on steroids. While AR overlays digital information into your real world view, Emma goes that step further. AR might just show you a cartoon man in your living room, but MR lets you beat the living crap out of him. So it's like AR sets the stage, but MR brings the play to life. The Quest 3 is probably the best example of this for now, and MR uses advanced sensors like the depth sensor, cameras, and computing power to understand and interact with the environment around you. Extended reality. I was a bit worried coming into this. Even one of the biggest YouTubers in the space, Thrill Seeker, had this to say. Not even XR experts know what XR actually stands for. And anyone that says that they do isn't actually an expert. And without the risk of coming across as a fake XR expert, I actually found this one somewhat okay to understand, or maybe I'm just completely wrong. But the general consensus seems to be that it's an umbrella term that encompasses all of the terms above. An easy way to think about this is on one side of the spectrum we have VR, where you're fully immersed. Halfway along we have mixed reality, where the virtual world and real world collide. And then the other end of the spectrum we have AR, which we now know is mostly the real world with digital information as an overlay. So we don't really need to go into each of these use cases because it's kind of just a combination of everything we've already talked about so far. But I think where the confusion lies is we just don't know how big the spectrum could be and how it could grow as new realities into the realm of possibility. And I honestly have no idea what these will be. Maybe it has something to do with smell, implants, telepathy, mind control, the dark art. <laughs> Now I gotta say, I was feeling pretty chuffed with myself, I was even lining up my new website, but that was until I tackled the final concept, spatial computing, and this one broke my tiny little brain. Now coming into it, I thought it was just a new term coined by Apple so they could charge us five times as much for their new VR headset, sorry, spatial computing experience, but digging a bit deeper, it became a whole lot more confusing. And that's because every article just has a different opinion of what it means. For example, some of them say spatial computing is just an umbrella term with the different realities. And I was thinking, great, so it's just XR. But then look at the sentence by XR today. However, spatial computing isn't just a concept in the XR space. Instead, it's own toolkit that connects the dots between ideas like the metaverse, digital twins, and user experience. And I don't know why, but that sentence just annoyed the fuck out of me. It kind of reminds me of the whole metaverse thing, where it's an old word and one of the tech giants decided to start using it again and all of a sudden it becomes really popular again, so people just start to overcomplicate it. So what is it? My understanding is that once again, is an umbrella term, but even bigger. And the way that made the most sense for me were these few paragraphs. So with spatial computing technology, machines can learn about physical spaces and collect data on how humans behave and move around in the physical space. Imagine a smart building with cameras and sensors that track how people move. The system then analyzes the data and signals the building's controls to adjust the lighting and temperature in unoccupied spaces to save energy. And this on the Wikipedia page, it doesn't necessarily require visual output and advanced pair of headphones, could qualify as spatial computing. 
So for me, the way that I understand it, it is XR, but it could also be spatial mapping, IoT devices, or even those smart robots that come up to you in the mall and offer you a drink. Well, at least that's how I understand it, and hopefully this gives you a basic grasp on what's going on here. I do think it's kind of funny that Apple is so obsessed with getting everyone to call it spatial computing, because to me, it really just looks like an XR device. And if you want to get your grubby little hands on the best extended reality device for us mere mortals, then I recently reviewed the Quest 3, and you can watch that right here.